welcome to another episode of Select Start. I'm Dio. I'm Jay. And we're just gonna scroll through these last few ones pretty quickly. It's just to see what we can uh, get on our list here, get out of the way. Um, great game fell just in the wrong time of the year. Titanfall 2. Oh, yeah. You, you know, Titanfall was one of the best, most fun games in the last few years that I've played, and Titanfall 2 addressed all my problems with it. The single player campaign is there. The multiplayer is still as fun as it used to be, it's and better. adds an even new layer, new depth to it. It just fell in between the two biggest shooters of the year. You know what I mean? You can't help but feel like you was sabotaged in a way. But Full support to the developers are giving it right now. It's not charging for a lot of the stuff. A lot of the DLC that it's giving out is free. They're still supporting it. Tons of Game of the Year nominations and wins. Like, honestly, one of the games of the year as far as I'm concerned. Go out, support this game. It deserves the support. Because you got to think, for all the complaints that people had about Titanfall 1, they listened and corrected. Yeah, they did. And you know what? Timefall 1 is still here. It's still out there. Uh, still playing Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. Oh my god. My little baby. I loved I Elder Scrolls V. I loved Skyrim. It's the game I've probably replayed the most. And Skyrim Special Edition. First of all, the fact that they gave it away for free. Oh. For people that already owned it on PC, on Steam. Like, if you own Skyrim... You own Skyrim Special Edition free was just added bonus. Like, I cannot say enough good things about Skyrim. Like you said, if it weren't for the fact that Skyrim was technically released several years ago, it would be Game of the Year. Every year. I, I love this game. It's um, the only game out there that's so full of content. Not only that, you have the gaming community that's free to do whatever they want to do, and that's what makes Skyrim special. And, and Skyrim is just full of story and history of their games. Like, Here's uh, the thing, between Bethesda, between Skyrim, Fallout, it is the very def definition, as far as I'm concerned, of open world. Oh yeah, they define. You know what I mean? A lot of people point to uh, Grand Theft Auto for Sandbox. Uh, Skyrim, Fallout, uh, Bethesda just take it to whole other levels. And a remastering of one of their greatest hits, I'll take it. Any day of the week. Uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare came out, obviously. Um, I've given up on Call of Duty. It's Call of Duty fatigue in the same way that I have fatigue for Assassin's Creed. One every year is too much and it's been too much for a while now. Same thing with Call of Duty. One every year is too much. And here's the thing. I don't know if that necessarily resonates with me and a lot of other people because yes sales aren't necessarily as good as they were last year but they're still blowing the competition out of the water it is still the undisputed king so will this trend of them making a new one every year change do they really need to like so so it's it's sort of that weird middle ground uh I don't know. Personally, I hope they take a step back and and do something different with it. Take time off and maybe work on the franchise to have it come back in like f three years time. You know what I mean? Um, not to not to say they couldn't crank one out in two years, but I think the extra development time, letting them like try to innovate in ways that I don't think they're able to with the once a year development cycle. Exactly. Like put, don't have it be just one team working on it and then the next team's working on it the next year. Have your whole studio work on it. That's it. That's and have it be the whole studio working in tandem over a larger production cycle to see what you could come up with. I think you'd be surprised. There's much more heart and care that goes into a game than the whole studio, you know, Perfect example. Yeah, perfect example. Dishonored 2. Oh, yeah. 
I loved the first Dishonored game. Mm -hmm. From the art direction, the style of the game itself, to the gameplay, and they've improved on it in every way with Dishonored 2. I mean, personally, you got a PS4, Xbox One, Windows, you can't go wrong. If you want a nice stealth action game, it's great. Like, highly recommend it. Um, Watch Dogs 2 came out. Oh, yeah. Personally, I'm willing to give them credit in the sense that they've improved upon what needed to be improved upon. But again, meaning they, they took the dour, uh, dour, somber, oh, I'm a generic good guy out for revenge. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, that hurt my throat. <coughs> oh, yeah. They took the. Uh, <laughs> They took the blandness of the first one, injected a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more, uh, more energy into the game. The hacking I, I, I heard is a lot more interesting this time around. And I heard the world fun to explore, so they've improved that direction. The problem is, personally, I do not like this new direction. It reminds me of, it, it, it seems like they're trying too hard to be hipster hackers. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, I got like mixed feelings on it, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, what were you going to say though? I said it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it was just fantastic. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Yeah, so, so again, it, it's a, that's a personal critique. Yeah. You know, the direction isn't my cup of tea, but the gameplay sounds great. I haven't played it myself, just because, again, the, the I'm a hipster hacker thing doesn't appeal to me, but I, I understand well, and I've seen people play it and everyone loves it. The thing I was going to say is, like you, I'm sick of uh, just redoing this. Mm -hmm. I liked Watch Dogs 1, it was fantastic. Watch Dogs 2, I'm not interested in buying it, should you go buy it if you're interested in to, to see like what Ubisoft has done with the story, go ahead. But it does not follow after Watch Dogs 1. Yeah, it's not a direct sequel, and that, that you are 100% correct. Uh, I mean, it's a new set of characters, so that's, well, that's uh, always fun. So, like again, you never know, maybe Watch Dogs 3, they'll find that weird happy medium that I'm sort of looking for as far as tone, but I can't fault the gameplay. Like I said, I've seen people play, everyone's having fun. Um, let's keep going down the list here, see if there's anything else that catches my eye. Last Guardian. Oh, yeah. uh, mixed reviews. Mixed reviews, and I understand why. From a, again, a narrative perspective, Heard nothing but amazing things. Nothing but amazing things. From a gameplay perspective, I heard it plays like a PS2 game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It plays like Eco. It plays like Shadow of the Colossus. And you would think that after all these years, they would have found a way to improve on the controls. It was the most frustrating part of those games to me. So, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to pick it up right now. Just because I know I, I had frustration issues with Shadows of the Colossus because of those controls. So I'm gonna wait till it's on sale, maybe half price, not not full price like it is right now. It's uh, 69 bucks. Uh, I'm gonna wait till it's maybe around closer to 40, then I'll buy the game. Yeah, because uh, it, it is an experience. I, I'm never gonna say that. From a narrative standpoint, from the work they've got done, I've seen Let's Plays on it. Like, everything makes you care for this creature, and I want to experience that. I really do. And I want to experience it the same way I experienced Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. It is worth that experience to me. It's just not worth 69 bucks to be frustrated with a control scheme that should have been fixed. Matt's brother tells me good things about the game, so... I said it's a lot of fun. I really care about uh, your, that, that creature. And the story, the story develops a lot as you go. The more you 
progress in the game, but the only thing is, the problem is the camera angles. Yeah, it's the camera angles and the controls, so... Um, last game that I'm going to mention, and we're done with 2016 Games in Review, The Walking Dead Season 3. I was surprised it came out this fast, to be perfectly honest. Two episodes, both Episode 1 and Episode 2 of Season 3, released at the same time, on the same day. I've played both of them, and I like it. I, I like this. It's an interesting story, because, yes, you still have Clem with you, but you are not Clem. The first game you were Lee and you were protecting Clem. And, and you felt that connection to her. Season 2, you are Clem and you are shaping her even further and interacting with new survivors. Season 3, you are a whole new set of survivors, a whole new family with its own set of problems and you meet Clem. And the question is, how did your previous decisions in seasons one and two affect Clem, how she reacts to you, and how you are gonna react to her, and other survivors, and other situations, and the story that you're setting. So, these first two episodes, 100% did their job, reeled me in, I'm excited for the next few. And I think I'm honestly more excited for season three than I was in uh, the Batman Telltale uh, series, and even uh, the Game of Thrones and uh, uh, Wolf Among Us. Like, like not, not that Tales those games weren't Wars. good, <laughs> but the last, like Walking Dead, their Telltale Walking Dead series, to me, is on a whole other level compared to the rest. Not the, uh, Tales from the Borderland. Tales from the Borderland was amazing, was absolutely crazy. amazing. But here's the thing, that to me came out of left field. I wasn't expecting Tales from the Borderland to be as good as it was. Whereas Walking Dead, from the first time I booted it up, I had high expectations. And this met those expectations. The only complaint that I have is the same complaint that you can have with all the Telltale games as of late, and that's this engine, please God, put it out the pasture. Develop a new engine for this game system already, you know what I mean? I know, I, I get tired of, like, okay, I gotta wait for this one. Uh, let's see, okay. It's why. Yeah. Don't change it up for me. So, Jay, I already gave my game of the year as Doom. Out of the few games that we mentioned, I have a feeling it's gonna be Doom for you as well, but... Well, just for the sake of not saying Doom again, I will say Skyrim Special Edition. I know, a lot of you are gonna be there. When that game's kind of mental, well, you know what? It's still the most amazing game to my eyes. So, we hope you guys enjoyed the discussion, and we got a lot to look forward to in 2017. Here's to hoping we get to play most of it, and fingers crossed we'll actually play most of it for this channel. So, we'll see you guys next time on Select Start.